Welcome back. We're, go we're continuing on with measuring outcomes and we're still looking at incidents. And I drew a similar graph as we had on the previous one. So we have a study here which extends over 10 years. And the time frame of the study I drew as this pink box. And you can see here this is the time frame over 10 years. And if you remember, this represents the, uh, the length of disease of, that a patient had. This was their onset and then this is when they died of that disease. And here's the onset, and when they died of the disease, again, for these people. I added here this y-axis so we can kind of keep track of people that are in here. Okay, so let's add a few more cases in here to make things a little more complicated. So we got a few patients in here who never got cancer, so they didn't have an onset, so there's no little circle to draw. And if they never got the cancer, they never died from the cancer either. And we had one patient in our study who never got cancer but then died of a car crash over here. And this lucky patient decided to leave and move to Paris halfway through the study. This unfortunate guy died of a gunshot before the end of the study. And this poor soul died of a heart attack before the end of the study. So you can see there's a lot of things going on here. This is life, right? People are going to move away. People are going to die from other reasons, not just from the cancer. So let's say that we're doing a study this over this 10 years, and we want to count the incidence of death from cancer. So I put the definition again of incidence here. It's the number of new cases over the number of people at risk in a given time frame. And so since we said our case is going to be death, in the time frame, we see, good, there's one, uh, there's two, and there's three. And so we've got three new cases. Now, the next thing that we need to do is figure out what to put in the denominator. Who are the people that are at risk in here? And we know that this person is, this person is, this person is at risk, this person, well, you know, they were at risk. And then they died, and so now from a car crash, and so they're no longer at risk for this portion. Similarly, this guy who had the heart attack was at risk here of getting cancer and dying, but then he had a heart attack and died, and so he was no longer at risk here. This person moved away, so who knows what happened, right? So they're no longer in our study, so they may have gotten cancer while they were in Paris and died, and we just don't know. And same thing with the gunshot here. And so this is real life again. That we, uh, During our study, we're losing uh, some of our patients to other causes of death, and we're losing them to uh, follow up as they, they move away. So while people are dying, uh, it's a different cause. It's a different risk. So we, cause these, we call these other risks competing risks because uh, these are not the ones that we were looking for, which was death by cancer. So then how do we manage this? How do we know which patients we're going to include in the denominator? Well, this is where something called incidence rate comes into play. It's also called person time. And what this does is it, it allows us to chop this up into pieces such that we can count the, the portion of time that this person was at risk while excluding the portion where they were gone and no longer at risk. And so what I've done here is I've tried to make these uh, bigger pink stripes and each one represents a year and the lighter pink is a year. So each one of these little intervals represents a year. So now we've broken up uh, each one of these timelines into these separate areas that we can count. How many years is each person uh, at risk? And so that's where we get the term person time. Each person for the unit of time we picked as a year, so each person year. So let's, let's do this. So for the first person, we have one year here, a second year, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then they die in the eighth year. So not for nine, and not for 10. So this person has eight person years uh, that they are at risk. All right, what about the next person? So they got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten person years at risk. And then this next person has one, two, three, four, five. They also have ten. And how about this next one, the one who died in a car crash? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then they died in the sixth year. So only six years, six person years. So I'm not going to make you go, make you watch me go through all of these, but why don't you pause the video now and count how many you think there are, and then when you unpause, I will fill the rest in, okay? All right, so I'm going to fill the rest in now. Okay, so I filled in every year that each one of these people were at risk. And so they're at risk any time that they don't have cancer and they're alive. So as soon as they die, they're no longer at risk. So this guy died of cancer, so no longer at risk there. This person died of a gunshot, so no longer at risk here. And this person moved away, so there, he's no longer at risk here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 people total. And the sum of this, so the sum of all this is 80 person years. So... We could put that over here and say 80 person years. And then you get 0 0.0375 cases over person years. And so this is called incidence rate or person time. And man, this got messy, but I hope you understood what we were doing here. And if you didn't, watch the video a couple times or, or send me an email or put, some, put a note in the comments so I can explain it to you further. But uh, what this allows you to do as well is to have a rolling study. So you can actually extend this study past 10 years and just have it keep going and having rolling enrollment. And people will just come in and out of the study as they die or move away or whatever. And you only have to count the amount of time that they are at risk in person time. And so this is one way to to take into account that fact that people are going to be in here for different lengths of time. So before we go, I just wanted to talk about two more things about incidents. So you'll remember our definition again, number of new cases over the number of people at risk. And we actually had two ways of, of measuring these number of people at risk. Normal incidents, which is sometimes called incident proportion counts, the whole time that the patient is in the study in the denominator here. And for incidence rate, uh, also called person time, it only counts pieces of time that the patient is in the study uh, as you know while they're at risk. So not the whole time. It's called person time. Now, since the incidence proportion is is a proportionate you're basically saying well we have four people total which ones had the the um the disease or the the case that we're looking for it's only going to be a proportion of that so be, because it is a proportion you know this value is going to be between zero and one now incident rate is not does not have that same uh, limit it can actually be between zero and infinity and the reason is it's because how you define the time so let's take our prior example which was uh, 0 0.0375 cases over person years. But let's say we decided not to measure, to slice things up into years, but to slice it up into centuries. And so this would instead be three cases over not 80 person years, but 0.8 person centuries, which comes out to 3.75. So that's obviously over one. And we could have picked some bigger thing. We could have picked millennia, in which case it would be 375 so or, or 37.5. And so you can see that this number is not limited to being between 0 and 1, but it's really between 0 and infinity. It all depends on what time frame you use. Now, we could have made it really, really small. Instead of using person years, we could have used person months or person days or person minutes in which case this number would get smaller and smaller. Now the other thing we should talk about is something called the waiting time. 
So let's take our incidents again. And you could say technically that uh, a case really is a person, right? So these two units can actually cancel out, and you're just left with years in the denominator. So the units of this thing would be 1 over years. So what if we took the inverse of that? We would get 1 over 0 0.0375, 1 over years, which the inverse of that equals 26.67 years. And what this means is you have to wait, on average, 26.67 years to see one case of whatever it is that you were looking for. So in our previous one was a death by cancer. We'd have to wait every 26 years you'd see someone die from cancer. And this is also called the expectation of life or the survival time. So I know this was a bit of a complicated topic, but watch this a few times and see if you can get the hang of it. And uh, if you can't, please feel free to contact me and I'll see if we can clarify any details. All right, we'll see you next time.